The Dallas Mavericks found themselves in a less than ideal situation to start the 2021 NBA season with the early absence of Kristaps Porzingis together with a number of rotation players missing a significant amount of games due to COVID-19. And early in February, the Mavs were the 13th seed in the Western Conference which was a far cry from how they were projected to be prior to the start of the year. But currently they have crawled their way up and are currently sitting at the 7th seed winning 10 of their last 15 games and are just 2.5 games away from the 5th seed in a stacked Western Conference. While being able to get back on track was definitely not only a result of the team being back together and being fully healthy but also because of their much improved play, most especially that of team superstar Luka Doncic. While early in the season, Doncic has experienced the byproducts of having very little help firsthand as he shot a ridiculously poor 9.5% from deep for the month of December and only 33% for the month of January as well. But capping off the month of March, the third year superstars joined LeBron James, Nikola Jokic, Michael Jordan and Larry Bird to become only the fifth player in NBA history to average at least 25 points, 7 rebounds and 7 assists while shooting at least 50% from the field and 40% from deep for a whole month. And without a doubt, Luka's increased scoring efficiency has directly influenced his team's success as the Mavs record has kept improving every month up to this point, while Luka has been consistently increasing his field goal and 3 point percentages as well. But watching Doncic play, you'll see that his improvement goes far beyond his efficiency. And so in this video, we'll try to dig deep and break down how Luka Doncic has altered his game to become a better player this season and what these improvements mean in terms of making him a far deadlier offensive machine in the future. So what's good guys? It's Rero Balls here and before we move on, please make sure to hit that like button if you happen to enjoy this video as it really helps the channel a lot. It only takes a second of your time but it will be much appreciated. So let's get to it. Before being drafted in 2018, a lot of scouts said that Luka Doncic wasn't going to be able to blow by defenders in the NBA, while they said that he wasn't quick enough or that he's gonna face much better athletes at the next level. But at this point, there's really no discussion about it anymore as everyone has seen Luka become a consistently tremendous rim attacker since his rookie year. I mean last season alone, he was at near LeBron James level which is no exaggeration because during his second season, Luka actually averaged the second most drives per game in the NBA and he converted 75% of his shots from the restricted area, which is even better than LeBron's 73% conversion rate. And what Luka has put up is actually the best percentage of any guard who took at least 200 attempts from that area last season. While of course, LeBron still attempted at least 170 more shots in the paint than him, which basically shows that LeBron still a different kind of force near the basket. But the fact that Luka was that good in terms of manufacturing shots in the paint at 21 years of age is actually proof that he's crafty enough, he's strong enough, and he has the skills to be a dominant inside operator in this league in the long run. But looking at it, Luka isn't taking as many shots at the rim this year. Well last season, he took 26% of all his total shot attempts at the basket, but that number is actually down to 20% this season. He's still making 71% of all his attempts at the rim though, which is still super efficient. But of course, when you've watched this guy last year who's shooting at a better rate than LeBron at the rim, then suddenly he just takes less attempts from that area, you might think that this guy would have quite a drop off in efficiency. But so far, that actually hasn't been the case. And in fact, Luka is still basically averaging identical points and assists per game compared to last season and he even has a slightly higher true shooting percentage this year. And I think this is because even though Luka's conversion rate within 3 feet of the basket fell off a little bit especially earlier this season, the thing is, his percentages from pretty much every other area on the floor has just really improved significantly. I mean, if you look at it, he has increased his shooting from within 10 to 16 feet of the basket by at least 13% and his 3 point shooting percentage is also with the career best 37%. While it might not look like it, but Luka is also relying on his 3 point shot less this season as his 3 point shots only occupy 38% of his total shot output this year as compared to 43% last season. But make no mistake, Luka's still averaging 8 outside attempts per game which means he's still the same high volume 3 point shooter that he was the past 2 seasons. The only difference is that he's just making them at a higher rate right now. Well the thing is, even when he was still playing for Real Madrid in Europe, Luka didn't really shoot the ball well from deep as his percentages only hovered around the low 30s. And such was also the case during his first two NBA seasons. But this year, Luka has been a significantly better 3 point shooter. While currently, the guy is shooting 43% on pull up threes which makes him a better pull up outside shooter than guys like Devin Booker, Campbell Walker and Jason Tatum this season. And this actually tells us that Luka has just improved in terms of manufacturing outside shots coming off the dribble 
possible and the numbers actually support this as per NBA advanced statistics out of all guys who have taken at least 400 three-point attempts after taking seven dribbles Lucas 39.7 percent ranks third among all players this season with James Harden and Damian Lillard being the only ones with higher three-point conversion rates than him in those kinds of situations and of course his step back three still remains one of the scariest shots in basketball today I mean half of his outside attempts this season have been step backs and has been making 40 percent of those which is a significant improvement from his 34 percent rate last season but of course there were criticisms about Luka's step back three prior to the start of the year some analysts said that he should take less of those because those are difficult shots or they're low percentage shots well basically they had a point as Luka hasn't always been the best outside shooter and of course a huge chunk of his attempts have always been step backs but I think Luka should just keep shooting that I mean there's not a lot of people who have figured out how to defend that kind of shot because if you watch him Luka sort of launches himself off the dribble with all his momentum looking like he's engaged going forward but then he has that ability to just suddenly accelerate then decelerate as he transitions his momentum going backward on the way to shooting a step back and not a lot of guys in the league have the skill to transition from moving forward to backward and from fast to slow effortlessly with the ball like that so I think when you have a guy like Luka it's almost like you just gotta live with the results of his shot and just let him shoot well first his outside shot keeps defenses honest which in turn gets his teammates open looks and second based on the upward trend in his shooting numbers I think there's no reason for us not to believe that he can become a consistently good outside shooter moving forward I mean his impressive shooting has only been on for like a couple of months but we've already seen this guy hit game winners and clutch three pointers before and also the thing is this year we've also seen Luka expand his game to include the mid-range as well actually last season 73 percent of his shots came from either the paint or the three-point line but that number is down to 58% this year and in fact he has already exceeded his mid-range shot total from last year after just 27 games this season and I think what's actually good about him expanding his game is that Luka isn't necessarily someone who tries to create mid-range shots the way someone like Chris Paul or Kevin Durant actually does basically he's just using the mid-range as another alternative area to capitalize on during possessions when shots at the rim or the three-point line aren't actually very viable and I think this also explains Luka's increase efficiency from almost anywhere on the floor I think he's picking spots more this year and he's not really trying to launch three pointers early in the shot clock like he did the past few seasons and that's because he now has the ability to actually create something in the mid-range whether it's a jump shot coming off the pick and roll or maybe even a post-up turnaround shot which he has been developing lately because obviously when you have a point guard like Luka who has a rare combination of size footwork and a soft touch he'd just be able to create shots in a lot of ways with the ball mostly in his hands well if a defender rushes into him on the perimeter with a big man waiting for him at the rim he can always hit a quick pull up and when he's driving to the rim with his defender locked up closely to his body he knows how to shoot a quick off the glass jumper to avoid the potential double team which is about to come and also we've never seen Luka post up this much before he's currently averaging a career high 6.4 post ups per game which ranks him in the 73rd percentile of all NBA players and when he's on the post he's also converting a signature turnaround fadeaway at a high rate as his trend can combined with his elite pivot allows him to manufacture shots or even find open teammates while overall Lucas making almost 49% off his mid-range attempts this season which ranks as the 22nd highest clip among all players with at least 40 attempts and I think the offensive modifications that Lucas added to his game will only help him moving forward whether it be on a playoff run next season or a finals appearance in a few years time because as we've seen in the past championship caliber offensive players have learned to expand their games throughout the years I mean in 2012 the first season LeBron won an NBA title he only took 13% off his shots from behind the arc but last season his three-point attempts already occupied more than 30% of his total shot attempts and though his percentages haven't really improved drastically I think we can definitely agree that he has used such part of his game on a number of occasions especially in the playoffs when interior defenses got tighter so definitely I think having more varied points of attack on offense will be required of Luka year after year but it's actually great that in only his third season he's already learning to explore those areas of his game where he can excel in the future well as of the moment it's hard to project where Luka will most likely dominate maybe five years from now will he continue channeling his inner LeBron with a relentless rim attacking or will he go full on James Harden and launch step back threes with no regard whatsoever currently opponents can still afford to defend one area of his game better than the other but I think once he develops into a more complete offensive player defenses just might not have a choice anymore
Thank you for sticking until the end of the video and as always feel free to drop your thoughts in the comment section below and please consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. Again this is Rero Balls and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.